We have a unique perspective. Uh, you've been to three World Cups. I've been to two World Cups. Mm -hmm. So I think it's important to talk about preparation, bubble, yeah. what goes on in terms of the expectation, getting to the tournament finally, what pre-camp looks like. Mm -hmm. So I'm curious of what you think um, it was like for us creating the bubble and space to perform at the, the biggest stage. I mean, first World Cup of mine in 2011 in Germany, I feel like it was kind of unknown. I just like took advice from our older players, you know, um, and, and to kind of see the expectations from them uh, who have previously been there. Um, and then the second World Cup, I feel like I kind of knew then, obviously, and kind of took uh, my experience into that World Cup. And um, it's definitely... Pre like a pressure situation because you have to mentally prepare, but you have all of these outside factors. You have your family, you have the expectation of like winning. Um, you have the pressure to play well individually as a team. Um, you have to make sure you're prepared uh, as an individual, but also as a team. And the, the pre-camp kind of sets you up for that. But when you actually get out on that stage is when you have to then execute it and apply all of that preparation to the field and that energy. So it's tough, I'm sure um, it was for you as well to just like clear out the noise. It's interesting. When I think back to the 2015 World Cup in Canada, and then I think about the 2019 World Cup in France, it was two different beasts. For Popularity, sure. women's soccer. Yeah the team country country was in shambles at the time with mm -hmm. the you know with the political can you know all the presidential yeah. stuff going on mm -hmm. um whoa what a difference we had a ton of security mm -hmm. uh there was a lot of um protest weirdly for our team yeah. because of our president right. so our safety was like right. a really big issue yeah so when you think about the 2015 World Cup to the 2019, we had to completely shut down hotels. Right. There were only a certain amount of mm -hmm. uh, employees allowed mm -hmm. into the bubble. Uh, the lobbies were completely blacked out, so people couldn't see in uh, fr front door, side doors. Everything was shut down. Mm -hmm. um, it was a really, really interesting time. And I don't think our country or the people in our country knew mm -hmm. how difficult that was mm -hmm. because we were so isolated and we were so shut off and all we had was each other. And right. we, we couldn't do the things we, we were used to doing, go right. to coffee shops, go to dinners. Right. Um, I can think of a time there was a few of us who snuck out the back door and we were like, we'll be fine. Let's just right. go to coffee. Yeah. <laughs> then we got, yeah. we got chased, we got chased. Uh -huh. One person saw one player, and then yeah. it was just a herd of people mm -hmm. running, and we just mm -hmm. took off. Mm -hmm. And that was when I realized, first and foremost, women's soccer was really going to be something incredible. Mm -hmm. And the change of the culture in terms of football, women's football was on the map, right? right. And we became icons overnight. Like, mm -hmm. it was a total shift. So the, the entire country is going to be watching. Yeah. Like, this is the one moment where everything stops mm -hmm. the world is still it's just about football yeah the weight mm -hmm. on the players how that impacts mm -hmm. their performance their mindset it's hard and that's what people don't understand yeah these tournaments come every four years mm -hmm. If you miss your time and your prime, mm -hmm. you wait your whole life for that one moment. Mm -hmm. And if it passes you by, you may never mm -hmm. see it again. You are so lucky you played in three World Cups. Yeah. I'm so grateful and lucky I mm -hmm. played in two. But nothing's guaranteed. Mm -hmm. Like this could be the first or last or they, you know, injury, all these things go into this pot of uncertainty, yeah. right? Right. And that's what makes this tournament mm -hmm. so special. So, um... I remember this clearly um, in 2015 in Canada. Obviously, it felt like a home tournament. <laughs> and I, I remember walking out to every game, and all I saw was red, white, and blue. It was waves, waves of Americans. Waves. Waves of, of our supporters and fans. And I think that's what really helped us 
like carry us through the tournament. Mm -hmm. And I know that, you know, everywhere is different, but in France, even too, we had waves of, of our fans and supporters and just having that feeling um, walking out onto the field and that confidence oh, already. That like, I just, I just remember hearing USA. Do you remember June. playing France? In, in Paris? Fr yes. Yeah. Yeah. They said mm -hmm. it was 60, 40, 60 French. And I said. 40 American. Those mm -hmm. American mm -hmm. fans Showed up. made that stadium feel like it was 90 10. Mm -hmm. I don't know what they ate Honestly. that morning <laughs> or what they were drinking, <laughs> they were drinking that <laughs> night. But let me tell you, when I, I mean, you could just see the crowd, yeah. the Americans swaying and dancing and yeah. cheering. Mm -hmm. I mean, there is no way yeah. that we win that game. Right. Without, without those them. fans. Mm -hmm. There's just no way. You're absolutely and, and that's what I love so much about our country is they show up. And that stadium against France, all odds against us, I thought there was mm -hmm. going to be two people mm -hmm. in the stands. Mm -hmm. And the way they showed up, was it changed the game. But then also when we left the game, going back, because you kind of get that only for the 90-plus <sighs> minutes, and then you got to go back in the bubble. Mm. So when you go back in the bubble – you then kind of have to come back down. It was like excitement level, you know, one out of 10 was a 12. Mm -hmm. And then you gotta, you know, come back down once you get back to the hotel and you gotta like really then refocus because then you're on to the next game. It, so how- That's a great point. So do you remember like how we felt kind of having to kind of come enjoy that one night and then you gotta come back and like refocus and how hard that was because your parents and your family, they want to come see you. They want to, like, get into the hotel. They want to go out for coffee. They want to go to dinner, lunch, mm -hmm. whatever. And we had, like, designated days that our parents could come and family because the focus was on the, on the football. The focus was then, okay, we got we to gotta actually turn this right around because now we're, we're in the semifinal against England. Well, so you can't get too high on the <laughs> wins, right? Yeah. So think about group stage, right? Anything can happen. Mm -hmm. Can't get too high mm -hmm. for the wins. Can't get too low for the losses. Right. I think that is what you're trying Good to point. nail. Because mm -hmm. when I think back, when we were in that quarterfinal against England mm -hmm. and we won in the way we did, we had a few extra days of rest. Mm -hmm. And I remember Jill bringing us in and said- It was a semifinal. It was a semifinal. France was the quarterfinal. Yep, you're right. Mm -hmm. Semifinal. then we knocked them out of the You're Olympics. right. Semifinal. Yeah against England we won yeah and Jill came in and said oh my god we now were is <laughs> now is the not the time to party now is not the time to be excited this job is not done mm -hmm. we all started laughing and we no, were like no she was like don't, don't go, go out boozing boozing or around or something sorry, like that sorry Jill but like we all looked at each other and we <laughs> were like what is it no one we were we can't even tire. leave we're in a compound we, can't we even worked leave. our entire life for this moment you think we're gonna go out right now even our youngest players on the team, they were like, huh? Boss, please. So funny. I love um, it. So funny. It's I'll so never funny. forget that. We, the we whole, cracked the up. <laughs> we all just got up and left. We're like, no one's partying. We'll party when this thing's over. And exactly. Yep. And you know, we did. Exactly. But, and um, we sure did that. I'll yeah. never forget us all laughing at her, like right in her face about that. Cause like, and then she was like, well, I don't know. You know, and we all were like, come on. Um, we're we're serious and we're gonna knock this out of the park and we're just like rolling through. And, and that's what the guy they they gotta carry that with them, right? Yeah, they do. I mean, they have to, right? You can't get they too, do. you can't get too in the moment, mm -hmm. right? Because then it makes you do weird shit. It really you does. What do we say? Stop doing the weird Don't, shit. Yeah. Just do the shit that you, you do always every do. single day. Yeah, because that's yeah. how that's what got you there, right? Exactly. Us being our consistent selves is what helped us get to where you know we were. Um, Two, three times. You know what I'm, what I really like for our men, mm -hmm. they don't have the expectation we do. It's not a knock. It's not me being an asshole. Yeah. There's just a difference when you're the best team in the world. Mm -hmm. You know, we're mm -hmm. ranked one. We've always been one. We've mm -hmm. had this expectation. We have this winning culture. If we suck, 
the older players are always writing in on social or always talking in terms <laughs> of panels and comment. I mean, they hold us accountable. Yeah. They were they were assholes to us. Mm -hmm. You know, we lose one game, we tie one game. Mm -hmm. It's like, oh my God, what's the... Yeah, but rightfully so. Agree. But I love the men because they're young, because they mm -hmm. haven't necessarily been in this situation yet. They don't have that, like target on their back right we had that it doesn't matter if we played thailand mm -hmm. in the group stage mm -hmm. and we win by an extreme amount we have a target on our back right every single game anything can happen mm -hmm. we can't lower our standard so i just think the men are in a unique place where the world is their oyster right now right. if they do well like we're all going to be you know there's an expectation. They mm -hmm. better do well. Mm -hmm. But also, like, it's not that they're happy to be there because that is far from the case. I just don't think they have that type of pressure mm -hmm. being the number one team in the world. Like, It's different. It's just a different pressure the to expectation carry. expectation is to win. They so can if you get anything out. less than that? You've lost. You've lost. Right, you've failed. Like if we get, right. if we're in a second, if we're in a third place game. Mm -hmm. We failed. We, we mm -hmm. fucked up bad, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. And it's just, mm -hmm. you know, we, we've been in the quarterfinals, right? Right. And our whole, like, it changed everything right. in U.S. soccer to even get to that point. Right. We get to the corner final and we lose. Mm-hmm. We get fucking hammered. Like we're expected yeah. to be in the final. Yeah. Every single mm -hmm. tournament. I feel like maybe this is like an underdog mentality. Maybe this is like helpful. Maybe they can ride with it. I don't I know. Mean, I feel like we're always there with the mm -hmm. with the men. Um, but knowing that we support them and that we are behind them and that our country's behind them and we can't wait. And so and this is like excited for them. Yeah. I'm so um, excited for them to have this stage mm -hmm. because it's like nothing in yeah. the world. But that's a really good point. That pressure really you know, can get to They don't have it. It the pressure it, of Brazil. Yeah, they don't through. have the pressure right. of France right. and Argentina, right. you know? Mm -hmm. Like, they are the dark horse, mm -hmm. you know? They are mm -hmm. a team that is going to have to fight for credibility yeah. on the world stage of football. Mm -hmm. How did you feel, though, with, like, this extra amount of pressure, not only as, like, you know, the performance side, but also, like, family and friends side, like, people coming in, um, in watching us and, and making time for them to share that experience with them and knowing that they've helped us get to where we are and get to that tournament. Like, do you remember um, how, like, difficult it was to really make time for our family and friends who came to visit? I felt pressure, too, to, like, make sure that we spent quality time with them there. So I think that added on a little bit of pressure that didn't for bother me as a me player. At all. That didn't bother me at all. Truthfully, I'll tell you, I'm going to move in a different direction and I'm and I'll get back to that with you. I think once the team was made, the roster was selected. Yeah, every kind of, everyone just every kinda... every bit of stress yeah. mm -hmm. just melts away. You finally know what your role is. You mm -hmm. I mean, it literally was Hunger Games. It was the gauntlet to make that that roster. I know, yeah. I mean, you sacrificed and gave up mm -hmm. everything mm -hmm. for that one phone call. Mm -hmm. Like when I'm watching Greg call those boys mm -hmm. and you just feel the sense of relief, mm -hmm. that was the changing moment for me mm -hmm. because it's almost like you can't breathe until you get that phone call. But once you get that phone call, it's go time. Mm -hmm. And you know your role. Everyone at that point going into that tournament with the roster selected, you know your role. That's the difference though. Because I don't know if the men's team right now in this moment um, have that understanding of their roles and responsibilities mm -hmm. um, because of the preparation time. Mm -hmm. When we were, you know, preparing for the tournament, every single one of us knew exactly what our role and responsibility was. Correct. Because it was just set. We just had we that time. We knew and we accepted it. Mm -hmm. Right. You're That's obviously going to, you're obviously, yeah, but obviously you're going to, bring your best every day in training mm -hmm. to make everyone better around you mm -hmm. and not only yourself, but the players around you and, and make them look good. Right. Because that's what we do. But I think that in that, in those moments, um, you know, before the call that you were talking about, 
it is a make or break. You are like, I am taking your, I'm taking your spot. Like, <sighs> don't get comfortable. No. You know, because I'm coming for you. And that's how I feel like is a little bit different um, and it's, in their preparation. And you're competing, right? Mm -hmm. Within the squad, you're competing, right? Mm -hmm. So there's conflict, right? right? There's always a bit of conflict because you're not settling for a role when the roster hasn't been announced, no. right? So no. it's it's interesting because I can think back to my own experience um, going into the tournament as a number two goalkeeper, mm -hmm. right? So with Alyssa, I knew that once I made that roster, it wasn't about me anymore. Mm -hmm. It was about how I was going to prep this team. Granted, every single day I train like I'm number one. Right. Otherwise, I'm not doing my team justice right. or myself For justice. Sure. For sure. 100%. But in those moments, every single day, what do you need? How can I make you better? Right. Kristen Press, you want to stay 20 minutes after training and just blow me up and mangle me I'll with shooting? Good. 10, 15 mm -hmm. yards away. Mm -hmm. I'm here for you, sister. You let yeah. me know what you need. Right. So it's interesting now that the guys have made the team. Mm -hmm. The roles have been set. Mm -hmm. Now is when the chemistry comes together, right? Mm -hmm. So now is when they can take a deep breath and say, I've made this Mm -hmm. This I've made it this far, right? right? I've made it to this point. Right. But it's just fucking begun. Right. Literally, it just has started. Mm -hmm. So I hope, because I know what it feels like. You know what it feels like working so hard for so long to get that phone call. But even if you're You starter. can't let up now, but you can't let up now. Mm -hmm. It's not just about making it there. That's where, yeah. like, they, it, mm -hmm. yeah. We have to be successful there. We have to win there. We yeah. have to stay there. Yeah. To be the best, you have to beat the best. Mm -hmm. So every single game, they have to go in with that type of mentality because I think if they get – if they're just happy to be there, we're not going to do well. No. They better not just be happy to be there. But we saw Tyler Adams speak about the American mentality. Love it. And that's – I mean, it's like through and through. We, like, have that just in us, and that drive. And there's a reason that, why at 23 – they voted him in as captain. Mm -hmm. The way he carries himself, mm -hmm. what he does both on and off the field, who mm -hmm. he is, how he represents himself, mm -hmm. his family, his country. Mm -hmm. Those boys, those men rely on him on a different type of level. I hope at 23 he can be okay carrying that because yeah. it's not easy. Because for us, our captains have always been, you know, older, older veteran, players, right? veteran players. Yeah. So that's pretty impressive. Um, but you made a good point that, you know, the roles and responsibilities are kind of like set once you make the roster, but you have to like fight for that position. Uh -huh. That one of 23. Um, 26. Well, now it's 26, yeah, but us. It was 23. It's always been 23. Yeah, correct. And so that's three less spots. So I feel even better, you know, making three, three of those. <laughs> um, barely on the last one. <laughs> Won't get into that, but no, but um, it's, it's huge because even if you are a starter, because for two of those World Cups, I started um, every game, and I feel like I still wasn't sure if I made it. I was still waiting for that call. Oh, yeah. And you're basically like shitting your pants waiting for it because you just want this so bad for yourself. And so I can like kind of go back to that day remembering. And then even on the third World Cup when Joe called, and that was like, you know, it's totally out of the blue, out unexpected mm -hmm. that I was coming back in. Um, so I'm trying to go back to that moment of just like you then just can like breathe. breathe. You can exhale because you're just inhaling every day. You're like, oh, my God, what, when is it? You're at the top right? of you're the You're waiting. Mountain. You're the air is thin, man. Yeah. You are so just like you make survival mode. Yeah. So then when you get that call, I remember you just kind of like can take a moment. And then you're like, all right, we're in this together. Now we ride at dawn. Mm -hmm. <laughs> what can I do for you? Now, How can I make yep. you look good? What are you going to do for me? How are you going to make me look good? Like, let's go. Yeah, because you go from so. a point of in, incredible tension, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. That last camp is... Brutal. Oh. <laughs> I wish I mean, fans and supporters I, could see that. Talk I about wish. a reality show. Yeah. I mean, that's when shit gets real. That last camp when you're fighting tooth and nail for every single fucking inch and your life depends on yeah. it. Yeah. Whoa. Like, you you can't get better mm -hmm. TV than that. I'm telling you. Like, when I was there, I was looking around. I was like, no one was even talking at dinner tables. Yeah, but that's what you need. That's what makes or breaks you. And that's what gets you to the final. 
because you know you can if you can survive this you're gonna win yeah and you can survive that tournament Mm -hmm. those seven games like it is it is brutal through and through and if you can survive that last camp and walk out of there and just yeah because it goes it it literally goes from tension to just complete Mm -hmm. cohesive family Mm mm-hmm so now I can only imagine how the team feels like right now in this moment because I remember how we felt and I just felt so connected with everyone. Yeah. Whether we were friends or not, you don't have to be best friends. You just have to respect each other and really support each other. And what you bring to the table. Yeah. I feel like we have a unique perspective because you and I both were in Brazil at the Olympics mm. and we know what that feels like. And we have been at, at least together the last two World Cups. Mm-hmm. And I find that... The difference was we just expected to win in Brazil. Mm -hmm. We just figured we should be in the final, Mm -hmm. right? So it's just the roster was different. The expectation felt different. We just came off the World Cup. The mentality was different. Mm -hmm. They were shaking up players at the time. Mm -hmm. And I do feel like people walked into that just expecting to be the best. Mm-hmm. And it's a it's a really interesting wake up call, mm-hmm. especially for a lot of these top five teams in the men's World Cup. If you don't focus on every single minute of every single game, and you get too caught up mm-hmm. in oh we have let's think okay we have seven games in these seven games we need to make sure Messi isn't playing ninety minutes. Or we don't think Neymar can stay healthy for this many groups. That, that's where it catches you and bites mm-hmm. you in the ass. Mm-hmm. Because we've been there. I, f- I do genuinely feel that in Brazil, it just felt wrong. It felt different. Mm-hmm. It didn't feel like France. It didn't feel like Canada. It did like if it's seven games, it doesn't matter if it's f- whatever whatever the fucking case it, it does. Every obstacle in front of you, that's all that matters is that day, mm-hmm. that game day, mm-hmm. that moment. You you almost section it in blocks. This 45-minute block, we have to win. And then we move on to the next 45-minute block. Mm-hmm. We have to win this game before right. we even think about what's next. Right. I feel like touching on that point, maybe it was a little too comfy. We were a little too comfy, cozy going into that tournament thinking, oh, we're just going to make it to the final. We just got to get through yeah. this. Like, yeah. that's just like... You know, um, when it comes down to physically being there, okay, you're, like, focused and, like, we're mentally in it and, you know, driven to, like, crush everyone. But, yeah, looking back now, maybe it was just kind of, like – and it felt like a little switch up, too. It felt like a little – we were a little naive maybe within the – you know, lineups or formation or – We always try to change things. Yeah, it just felt like – it wasn't, you know, let's put your best, let's put your best, best team out there every single game. And then if someone ends up towards the end of the tournament getting tired, then, you know, I think players are maybe too managed. So there is like a balance. Listen, I'm not a coach and um, at that level, and I can't imagine the pressure that our national team coaches have had mm-hmm. over the years mm-hmm. because I don't ever know if I want to be in that position. And I know it's so difficult. But yeah, I felt a little different during the Olympics, coming off of that win. Um, So you're right. I think that it's like one game at a time, one day at a time, one training at a time, and making sure that everyone has that same um, mentality going into each game, no matter who the opponent is. Um, But, yeah, maybe we were already looking over the group stage and we were already into the final, and we were just like, let's just kind of get through this. I don't know. Maybe that helps our men. Yeah. You know, maybe Mm -hmm. we go against Mm -hmm. an England Mm-hmm. we're just playing against the u.s team yeah this is our time to rest all yeah. of our big guns right but hopefully it bites them in the ass i don't know what the case is but i know if i'm a coach you're I playing know your they best have team to, you play your best team they yeah. literally these these men have waited their whole life for mm-hmm. these moments mm-hmm. like if if i am in the 80th minute and i hit a wall mm-hmm. oh man i'm Mm-hmm. plowing through that fucking thing there's no way it's stopping me or holding me back you know what i mean mm-hmm. like there's just a, a different yeah. mindset when it comes to this so you can't get too crazy even coaches right i remember when i think back i'm like yeah. holy shit our coaches were so on edge mm-hmm. right everyone was on edge mm-hmm. our technical staff was trying to get all yeah. the things right yeah 
and we're just like, take a deep breath. Right. We got this. Like, We've trained our whole lives for this right. moment. You guys, we're have gonna be okay us properly. We're gonna yeah. be okay. Yeah. And I, I feel like I, I hope the men feel that as well. And mm-hmm. I, I, Greg's been there. Right. You know, what a unbelievable opportunity Mm -hmm. to have a coach who's actually been there, who understands what they're going through, who can relate. Mm -hmm. Like that can only help us. That's such a good point. Cause I don't know if any of our, you know, coaches have done that. I mean, they, they prepared us phenomenally, like hands down. Like I felt overly prepared, right? Like we went in there knowing every single position's role. In every set piece imaginable. I mean, we were in tip top shape, prepped, uh, organized, detailed, like just knew it like the back of our hand. Mm -hmm. But I think also um, it's really important that, you know, uh, in those group stage games that these men just focus even just on the first game. Because I remember against Thailand, we know that it might be, you know, an easier match of the three, um, but we still we still player starting, and we didn't even care. No, nope. we scored thirteen, 13 goals, goals, and people were like hammering mixed. Us. People were hammering, but no, like I'm sorry, like we need the proper respect is to put your best players out on there, on on the field, and and to win and to play well and to do the game justice, and that's what we did. So I hope our boys can kind of focus on that no matter who you play consistently be you and bring that mentality no matter what, because, you know, it, in the end, it's going to be a great outcome Could because be. you know, you've given everything and that at the end of the day you is the most away. important. Yeah. If you can walk away knowing that, mm-hmm. I mean, there's no second place in these things. Yeah. <laughs> like there's just not like, yeah. Mm-hmm. it's first mm-hmm. first or bust you either win the gold medal or no one really cares it's just i mean that's fact. what we always said that's why every meeting it. i remember like it's gold medal or bust yeah it was like oh 100 and some days oh 50 some days oh you know 20 some days and we were like well we either win or we just go home yeah, like don't. it's like we win or we fail that's it there's no in between yeah so um this is gonna be it's gonna be a huge test for them moving forward i'll tell you that mm-hmm. it's a huge test this is gonna set us up on the men's side? Because mm-hmm. we have been investing so much time and money in our federation for our men to be in this moment, in this spot. Mm-hmm. And it's, you know, they've been handed every opportunity they possibly mm-hmm. can. You know, they've gone overseas. They have all this experience. Um, mm-hmm. There's no excuses now. And Greg said that in the press conference. There's no excuses mm-hmm. now. Mm-hmm. Like, it's about winning. It's about competing. It's about performing. Mm-hmm. It's funny that when you think of it, though, that, like, the men, it's considered, like, even better to go overseas, right? Because just the model in, in you know, Europe and um, just overseas is is just more advanced, I yeah. should say, um, than, than what we have in the, in the MLS here in the United States. But for women, for us, it's better to... <laughs> to stay here like everybody wants us to stay home so that we're more accessible Mm -hmm. and that um you know it's easier to attend camps and games and things um so it's quite the opposite in our sport Mm -hmm. yet like we you know have won the tournament um you know four times and it's just I don't know it's interesting for me to see that like all the men are like let's go to Europe let's go to Europe let's go to Europe because it's like you know better football Mm -hmm. and um I don't know, it's more consistent year round, uh, maybe more challenging. Uh, yet for us, it's, it's here. better to stay home. Oh, it's here. So I'm, you know, interested to see the players who, you know, the few players who do play in the MLS, how well they do in that environment um, and how different it will be compared to the European players that we it's have. It's a great opportunity. Team. I look forward to seeing what, mm-hmm. um, what the men, mm-hmm. how well they do. Yeah, and how they handle it. Yeah, well, they have our support. Always. Mm-hmm.